That brings us to number four. Number four is utilizing that and creating a systems asset. Everyone say systems asset. Thank you, systems asset. So as you're building up one, two, and three then, systems asset is basically the structure and the architecture of your business. And you want to utilize what you're doing in one, two, and three and funnel it into something that, has, that is a structural asset. This could be your systems, your processes. And number four, which is the systems asset, could be your team, could be your SOPs in place. So uh, this is uh, my team. We're close to about 30 people right now. And the way I'm thinking about creating this structural asset and my bottleneck and how I take my business to the next level, um, it's basically people and process. Okay, write that down, people and process. So how do you build up this step number four, your structural asset? Um, so many things, this, this entire thing here could be an entire training alone, but this would be making sure that for every single person, we have like the four R documents, right? The roles, responsibility, results, and requirements. For every single thing that we do, we, I, we make sure that there is a process uh, in place. So in terms of our processes, we'll talk more about Trello as well as we talk about um, the structural asset um, is, so, first, how many of you here use Trello? Trello, Trello user. How many of you use a software to help you manage workflow, but not Trello? Show of hands. Okay, so thank you. So, whether it's Asana, whether it's Monday, whether it's any of these different softwares, uh, you want to create and have some sort of building this structure, systems, processes for your business. So, one of the things that we do next is in order to build up this structure, uh, for our, let's say our retargeting ads, um, is we would have an entire board on Trello that puts in all of the, our different testimonials archived in one place so that if we want to turn it into a retargeting ad, my traffic team can easily go into this board and look at all of the different images, videos that can be turned into a retargeting ad. So you'll see that on each different list, we have all of our different funnels, and inside the category, inside the list, we have the specific people and either the screenshots or the videos that they submitted to us for all of our different funnels. Now, what is the purpose of this? This is a structural asset. This structural asset enables my team, my traffic team, to go in here and see, hey, we need more retargeting creatives um, what can we do? So they can come in here and they can look at all the different testimonials that's divided on the different funnels to start running their retargeting ad campaigns because now everything is in one place. All right? So um, this is how you build up the structural asset to just constantly think about people, process, systems, um, and the way we do that when it comes to social media is, is basically this, okay? So this, this step number four when it comes to this uh, systems asset is to automate social media, right? This, this, this is one big circle that relates to everything, right? How many of you here uh, would like to automate social media? Okay, thank you. So um, I know that, you know, automating social media sounds like it's something that we hear of all the time and, um, it might not excite some of you, especially since it's after lunch and the carbs are kicking in. So um, I thought, you know, what's going to get your attention uh, would be this. So it's basically, rather than automating social media, here's what this section is about, okay? Um, this is how I believe a copywriter in the ClickFunnels community will write this section up. Okay, it's basically this. It says, um, underground marketer finally breaks his silence and spills the beans to how he accidentally stumbled upon a five-step system to creating an automated, leverageable, transferable traffic system to help fill your funnel and get unlimited leads by never making a social media post ever again, 
and how you can do it too, even if you are deaf, dumb, or mute, for the rest of your life, and even possibly your next one. Okay? Um, so I'm, I'm going to be sharing with you, like, how do you create this systems asset to help you feel your social asset, because it's one big circle, okay? Because um, the truth is, even though it might look like I'm really consistent on social media, even though we post on Instagram four times a day, on Facebook, same thing four times a day, every other day on YouTube, it looks like Ping Jun has no life, okay? But the truth is, even though I post really frequently on all these different um, uh, platforms, I actually really, really dislike making posts on social media. And if we are friends on Facebook, on my personal profile, you will see that the last post that I made on my Facebook personal profile was in 2014, okay? <laughs> True story, okay? And the reason for that is because I always feel that social media is a distraction, okay? I don't want to use social media to look at funny cat dog videos, but I want to use it as a tool to fuel and build my business, okay? So um, how many of you here dislike making social media posts, right? Thank you. How many of you here would like to never make a social media post ever again? Okay, thank you. So the way to do that is to build up your structural asset. Now, how do you build up this structural asset? It's basically this, okay? Um, so one way to do that is to build a story bank. Now, to build this story bank, now, why is this important? Here's why. As I started to automate my social media process and I started hiring writers in-house, one of the biggest challenges that I would face is my writer telling me, I can write this part, but I don't know the story and what you went through with regards to this lesson over here, right? We all know that social media is about making something that is personal, that is relatable, um, that is true. And my biggest challenge was really getting writers who knew and understood my story. Because I could hire really good writers, people that's good at writing, but they might not necessarily know what I went through with regards to that specific topic. So one of the things that we started doing was we started building up this bank of stories and archived it in a way that gives us structure, that helps us build up process towards doing this, okay? Now, so one of the things that I would do is step number one, um, you could use an app like WhatsApp or Voxer, but one of the things that you can do is you can put your team that is in charge of your either Seinfeld emails or social media, put them in a group, and every single time I go through something in my daily life, if I took a picture, then what I would do is I would send this picture and I would do a voice note that is related to this thing over here, okay? So I would send this to my team, to my social media team, or as well as the people that's in, that's in charge of email marketing, and they would be in this little group um, of either, you can use WhatsApp or, or Voxer, okay? Now, once I do that, step number two is then they will take these image together with the voice note and they will send it to a specific Trello board, okay? So you notice that in this Trello board here, I have all these different images stored together with the voice note of what I did. So now this is a structural asset, right? It gives my social asset structure. There's process in place and it also helps my team because it's now no longer a daily tactical thing where I have to tell them, but I'm building up this asset that gives it structure. Okay, so step number two is you can send it to your Trello board or Monday or Asana. It's all kept somewhere, okay? And then after that, once we do that, then step number three is the writer 
would take my voice note and create a write-up and put this write-up in a story bank. Now, inside our story bank, we split up the topics based on these few things. The story could be based upon based on struggles, it could be successes, it could be beliefs, it could be mindset, it could be about ambition, it could be about fears, it could be about motivation. So my team would categorize it based on the things that I talk about all the time. So that way, if there was a post in future that is related to that specific topic that I always talk about, they can go back and look at all of the different stories related to that subject, okay? So same thing for you. What does this mean for you? It means that if you feel that there are always these different topics that you talk about, any writer can write about those topics. But what a writer can't do is they can't write based upon your story or your personality if they don't know what it is, right? And that is always one of the biggest challenges a business owner will face. A business owner, the reason why they can't let go of social media is because they're always saying, I wanna let go of social media, but I'm worried that that person can't write in my voice, right? How many of you have experienced that before, right? Thank you, very, very common. Now this solves that problem. This allows you to eventually let go and trust that someone else can take over this process because now you're building up this structural asset, okay? So um, I think I did a quick screen cap on my um, story bank. So if you notice this story bank over here, um, my team splits it up into many different tabs, right? So there's like big picture, entrepreneurship, online marketing, speaking, productivity, mindset. And the way they do it is inside this um, file, okay, you will see like, notice like the structure. We have the links to the post that was done. We have the links to the exact Google Drive. We have the person that's in charge. On the right-hand side, there is the write-up. There are hundreds and hundreds of these different posts together with the hook, together with the title, um, together with the, the, where it's from. So all these different tabs in here um, shows um, the story bank that is inside and how it's repurposed into all these different platforms. Same thing for this. This is um, all the different captions um, in one of our, um, I think this is for Instagram, right? So when you are documenting it all into these different documents, then it means that when a person needs to take over or when, a, when you hire a freelancer, a VA, all they need to do then is to do a search for that specific keyword in that document, and now they can retrieve that specific article that is based upon that keyword, okay? So this is how you start building up this, this structure, okay? So the way you get your life back is to get and build these in-house training manuals, okay? Um, I personally, the last, I mean, it's very, very rare that I would make a post. So all of my posts, they're all personal. It's just that it does not take up my time because I'm focusing on working on the business rather than in the business. And the way you start letting go and start scaling and start building your team or outsourcing is to build these in-house training manuals. So I have in-house training manuals for the person that handles my Facebook, for Instagram, for YouTube, for my ads, for every single role, okay? So for example, this would be the story bank manual that my team creates. One of the things that you wanna do is you wanna make the person that is taking care of that specific process 
to be also the person that creates the process for it, okay? Because you don't know what's happening in the trenches. So when you make the person that is taking care of that specific process, as well as a result, they now take ownership of it, and then at the same time, you are actually empowering them to eventually let go of the thing that's tactical as well, and that's how you can move them into higher level strategic stuff, okay? So one of the things you wanna do in order to create your manuals or your SOPs is to create these different frameworks, okay? So like, for example, content multiplier formula originated really from just the SOPs from my team. So all I did for content multiplier formula when, when I presented it was I took what my team was already doing and what we were doing in-house and made it into a product, into a presentation, okay? So with these in-house manuals, this is how your team can start growing. This is how you can start empowering that person in that position. And this is how you can start scaling strategically, okay? Now, if you take a look at this training manual, um, this is literally the in-house training manual that uh, my team uses for creating the story bank, okay? So whenever we expand our team, and as we hire more people that is inside this process of content creation, what do we do? We just hand them this in-house training manual, okay? Now, this is something you wanna be doing if you wanna scale strategically, okay? The reason why most entrepreneurs feel, I mean, when, when, it come, when it comes to scaling, here's how most entrepreneurs scale, okay? Whenever people and entrepreneurs feel pressure, most of the time, they say, oh man, I'm, I'm feeling so much stress right now, I need to go higher, okay? So that, that some, I can get some people take some stress off me, okay? And when people hire without a process in place, it is building a house of cards. That is something I personally went through uh, many years ago. Whenever, whenever I felt stressed, I wanted to hire, and whenever I hired people without an actual process in place, only to realize I need to start managing this person that gives me more stress. Um, and the reason for that was because I didn't have a process first, okay? So whatever it is that you are doing in your business that you feel is repetitive in nature, start creating a process, a manual, an SOP on it. Okay, so this is just like the design that my team uses in terms of introducing to uh, my in-house team, if we have a new hire, how it all works in the company, okay? So step, that's step number four. Step number four, what is it? It is the structural asset. Always think about how can you take that end result, the tactical thing that you're doing all the time, how can you put systems and processes into place so that you're building up number four, which is your structural asset.